Hey everybody, this is Sean from ASET Education. Now, idiomatic expressions are very important in CELPIP. There are marks for this. It's mentioned on the marking scheme again and again, use of idiomatic expressions. The problem is, the moment you use an idiom, you lose a mark. And the difference between an idiom as well as an idiomatic expression is very little. There's a very thin line, so it's hard to understand what to use exactly. So here's, first of all, an overview of what is an idiom and what's an idiomatic expression. Then we're gonna look at which ones you should know. We're gonna discuss the 10 best that you can use and that you can memorize, because you wouldn't need to use more than 10, it would be overdoing it. Well, let's get started. So the first one is kick the bucket. This right here is an idiom. It's not an idiomatic expression, which means you should not use it. It's just classified in that title. It's an idiom, not an idiomatic expression. Whoever came up with it, ask them. But if you want to know the definition, the definition is an idiom is where the literal meaning does not make sense. So if I'm kicking the bucket, what does it have to do with dying? Because that's what that means. To kick the bucket means to die. Okay, so but I'm not kicking the bucket doesn't kill anybody. So that's the thing with idioms. That's the difference. But they say with an idiomatic expression, break the ice, the meaning is more clear. But break the ice means to initiate social interaction, which means you and I are sitting in a mall next to each other. We're both nervous. So I start saying hello. And I, I was the one who broke the ice and basically begun the conversation. But then you can argue that break the ice is also not literal. It's I'm not breaking the ice, I am talking. Well, that's the thing. It's a very small difference. The logic is break the ice is a little less vague. It's more close to like, okay, break the uh, break the ice at least shows that break the tension, let's start talking. But the bucket and the uh, the to die, there's no relation between them. Right, so that's why that's an idiom and that's an idiomatic expression. So you can get easily confused with what is what. Hence, the best thing you can do is memorize 10 of them that you are sure of that they are idiomatic expressions and you can use them in your writing and speaking. That's what this list is meant to do and it'll give you good marks for your expressions, range, and it is in the marking scheme, so it is very important. I have been posting a lot of these on our Instagram channel, so if you haven't followed AZ Education on Instagram, please do. So let's have a look. The first one is at the drop of a hat. That means without any hesitation, instantly. I have picked these to make sure you can use them. So I'll tell you the situations where in writing and speaking you can use these. These are the advanced ones. They're not the simple ones like a piece of cake. So they're unique, advanced, and you can actually use them in your descriptions. So the drop of a hat means without any hesitation or instantly. In writing and speaking, you have places where you have to give opinions. You can say at the drop of a hat, I choose this, okay? You can also say uh, when you're making suggestions in part one, at the drop of a hat, I would suggest you to do this. Part seven speaking, at the drop of a hat, my opinion is this, because you have to pick an opinion there. Same thing for part five speaking. Now, of course, don't use it in all those parts. You use a variation, so you use this once in speaking, once in writing, and then you have the others one, others as, to, as well to choose from. Let's look at the next one, beat around the bush. This is something that you might have heard about. Beat around the bush means to avoid talking about what is important. So I can tell you, hey, don't beat around the bush, let's talk about the urgent situation. That means let's get to the point, let's not talk about distractions. There's lots of places you can use it in writing and speaking. I mean, if you're talking to someone, uh, pretending to talk and speaking, you can use that. You can also say uh, this in a formal email, complaining to someone, instead of beating around the bush, let me tell you the main complaint that I have is this one. Next you have hit the nail on the head. So hit the nail on the head is when you describe exactly what is causing a situation or a problem. I wanna add to that. It is when you describe that happening correctly. So if, for example, I give you 10 answers to your question, you can say, hey, nine out of 10 answers are wrong, but your last answer, the 10th one, is hitting the nail on the head. It means it is answering the question perfectly or it is describing the, the situation, the problem. It's like describing the situation or solving something with the right answer. So when you, again, come up with the right answer after a long time, someone may say, 
hey, you hit the nail on the head. Or they also add the word right. You hit the nail on, right on the head. Okay, so you can use this again in your writing or speaking if you are talking to someone, let's say in response in an informal email or in speaking if you're responding to someone, that imaginary person, you can use it there. Cut to the chase is again going to the conclusion, hey, let's cut to the chase in your part five speaking or your part seven. And then in writing as well, instead of saying to conclude, you can say cutting to the chase, this is the overall conclusion. Okay, it's like to conclude, but a better version. Bite the bullet means to endure a painful or otherwise unpleasant situation that is unavoidable. So you're not just getting pain for fun. It is unavoidable. So right now you're doing this exam, which is pretty difficult. So yeah, you're biting the bullet in order to get your immigration. That's where you can use it. And again, when you're talking informally or formally to someone and you're speaking and writing, making suggestions, like in part five, you're saying, hey, you should choose this even though it's gonna be harder. You gotta bite the bullet because whatever. Okay, you can say this in part six speaking as well when you cannot attend a birthday party, for example, and you're apologizing. You can say, hey, I would love to come, but my boss gave me this project and I have to bite the bullet and work overnight. Miss the boat is to miss an opportunity. Pretty simple, right? So I don't want to miss the boat on this new job offer. Uh, that's why I couldn't attend your birthday party. Again, this could be part six speaking. Uh, you could do this in the formal emails as well. I don't want to miss the boat on this unique opportunity. So please find my attached resume. Playing devil's advocate is to argue or oppose someone and it's to, again, expand on your argument. So you would have to elaborate your stuff after this. You don't just say this in one small sentence. So this is ideal in writing task two. When you change body one to body two, from body one positive, you go body two negative. Now, if you support the other side, for example, you can say, hey, playing the devil's advocate, the other side does have this benefit, but I got these other problems with this issue with this side. So playing devil's advocate is I, I'm agreeing temporarily on the other side, and this is what ma matters, but majorly I want these things to be followed. So it's just temporarily where you say, okay, let me support the other side, and this is what I got to say, but again, let me switch stances, okay? The ball is in your court is something you can use in your uh, speaking or informal emails when you're talking to someone saying, hey, it's your decision now, you can make the next decision or the next move. That, that means that person has the power. It's like in soccer. So that means the ball is in their court. They can decide what to do with it wherever they want to kick it. All right. So you could say at the end of your part one speaking, hey, I gave you three suggestions. Now the ball is in your court to follow it or not. Barking up the wrong tree is to be mistaken or misguided to look in the wrong place. So uh, you could say that, again, in, in it, there's so many applications there. Like if you're suggesting someone to not go for option A, go for option B, task two writing, speaking, whenever you are uh, debating in speaking or giving opposing views, you can say, hey, you're barking up the wrong tree. This option is better than that option. All right. Spill the beans is to reveal a secret or information, a secret information accidentally or intentionally. So basically revealing information. You would hear this a lot. And again, these words and phrases are important for reading and listening to because you might hear it that, uh, there. So you could say uh, again and speaking, hey, I want to spill the beans. I actually cheated on this test. And that could be when you're talking to your friend informally. You could also use it in formal situations. You could say, hey, if you don't... Uh, in part one email, if you don't fix the restaurant situation, I will spill the beans to the media and tell them about your um, your sanitary conditions and their, their lack of. So that could be the formal email or an informal email as well. A lot of situations and applications where you can use them. So guys, there it is. Take a screenshot if you want, all right? There are the 10 idiomatic expressions you can actually use and they're advanced and they'll give you marks because they are in the marking sheet. Please use them. Please like, share, and subscribe if you found value in this video. Remember, the CELPIP course is right down there. Scroll down, you'll see it. It has a big list of these, a one hour lesson on vocabulary, which is very important, as well as a lot of great mock tests and uh, explanations on all modules. So check it out. And if you have any questions, email is in the description as well. Talk to you soon.